Now, the election in Kenya has obviously gone into a dispute. Yes. What does that mean for the lawyers? Money, because uh, obviously there will be cases mm -hmm. and there's an opportunity for to develop Kenya's constitutional law regarding elections. Mm -hmm. So most definitely, um, we have precedents in 2013 and in 2017, mm -hmm. and then that would um, most likely be followed in 2022. What does the That's law say at this time? What, what does the law say? Okay, so the main law governing election petitions in Kenya um, is not, interestingly, is not the constitution. Well, the constitution lays down the... Um, the foundation that it is parliaments that are supposed to enact legislation for governing it. But we make reference to the Supreme Court rules, the Supreme Court election petition rules of 2017 that provides that within seven days of, e of announcement of the election results, any person who is agreed, and that's provided by four by rule nine mm -hmm. um, of the rules, any person who is agreed is supposed to file a petition. Now, this is subject to certain considerations. The first is that you are supposed to make a security deposit for costs, and that is the sum of 1 million shillings. Converting that to CDs is 77,343 CDs mm -hmm. and then 34 pesos. Mm -hmm. And then when you are done, you are also supposed to um, um, file, the, once you have filed the petition, the petition is supposed to be stamped by the registry of the Supreme Court and served on the other party. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be served within two days. Service basically means you are making the other party aware that I have filed a petition against you, I'm sending you to court. And so within the two days, it may be made by serving it physically, i.e. going to the person, the other candidate, and giving it to the person, or it may be done by circulating it in a newspaper with national coverage, or it may also be done electronically. But if it is done electronically, it has to be served within six hours of filing of the petition at the Supreme Court. From there, the respondent, who then becomes the person who has been served, the person who's supposed to defend, then has four days to reply to their petition. Upon reply, pleadings have come to a close. And then the court will then set a date for a pre-trial conference. And then at the pre-trial conference, they then make certain considerations as how the trial would run. And then the trial begins. And, mm, and, and masses are concluded. Okay, so take us to what you have. So which, okay. what is this? Is this the precedent? Yes, please. So Odinga and five others versus their election commission and, and, and three others. These so, are the petitioners. So this is what happened in 2013. Yes. This group of people, including Raila Odinga, yes. uh, Dennis Intumba, uh, Florence Sekon, and Moses Korea, were yeah. challenging... African get, Center get, for Open Governance. Uh, this was an amicus curia? No, they were, actually, they were an actual the, party. Uh, why, were they party to the election? No. And that's the interest, interesting thing about Kenya's election. The petition. The petition. Uh -huh. I mean, because in Kenya's constitution, persons can actually sue Unlike in Ghana, where it, it has limited. to be the losing candidate. Yes. The oh, I see. That's party. interesting. So these were not, they are not politicians. They are private citizens. That's you. So they join the action. Yes. So, so, so in, in fact, in their Kenya, petitions anybody were different. Can, can, can join. Yes. And in Kenya, there can be different petitions. The courts would just have to amalgamate it. So they did not agree to file a petition. They filed their petitions differently. These three filed one petition. Raila Odinga filed one petition. And then um, African Centre for Open uh, for Open Governance okay, filed so, one so petition. The petition uh, so at this stage, that the Supreme Court has opened up, yes. uh, waiting for the, the seven days to yes. run. Anybody can file. Any Kenyan citizen can file. If you have your seventy seven thousand cities. Oh, so they will take seventy seven seventy seven seventy. Yes. Okay. All right. Because okay. It's a, so the court does not join it yet. They join mm. it upon the pre-trial conference. They consolidate it at that they time. They consolidate it at that time. Mm. But you can file separately. I see. That's interesting. Okay, well, let's move on. And then on these are the respondents. Um, All right. Ahmed Isaac Hassan at the time was the chair of the I um, Independent Electoral. Okay, so now does it require that the Independent Electoral Commission be sued? Yes. You know, in Ghana, the suit is, is the, the Ghana's own is delineated clearly. The suit can only be by the losing candidate. Yes. And he's suing the Electoral Commission, Commission. as the first defendant. Yes. And then the winning candidate as the second defendant, the one in whose favor the declaration was, was made. made. Yes, yes, but it's, it's also subject to certain considerations mm -hmm. because if you are of the view that mm -hmm. the losing candidate has a role to play, then you may add, attach, you may add a person to the suit. Some things may be purely numerical. You, you believe that it is not to the interest of the losing candidate or the losing candidate had nothing to do with the um, election or practice. Your main business So an election petition can occur in Kenya without the losing candidate participating? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Without the losing uh, candidate participation. Other people, and then if the ruling comes out that the election is annulled or that the election is it's declared in favor of the losing candidate, he just picks it up. Yes. But can the court do that, though? Is it part of the remit of the court? Yes. To it's declare a different winner from the one that the Electoral Commission declared? 
Because in Ghana, the court can do that. In yeah. fact, in 2013's petition, 2012's 13's petition, yeah. Yeah. the court was invited to do to, that. To cancel yeah. some votes. And that would have made... Yes, yeah, to the cancel way. some votes and declare the losing candidate yes. the winner. They, can Kenya do that? They can, but the, the courts are very wary. The reason is that the general principle is that the courts should be very slow in touching the views of the people, the voice of the people. So the courts can order a rerun. Which yes. they, they did in 2017. Yeah. Uh, we'll see that subsequently. Okay, but let's go. Uh, most of them, these were the, the oh, judges. These are the most important people in Africa now. <laughs> How many are they? Um, six. Six? That's interesting because in Ghana, it's supposed to be an odd number. Everywhere is an odd number. <laughs> yes, even. Kenya is six? Yes. Six, six people. Six in 2017, six in 2013, six in 2017. Okay, so six with three, three, what do we do? It's lost. It's considered lost. Oh, that's interesting again. So the application is lost yes, so if, if the voting is even. Yes. So oh, okay. I filed, it was so, uh, it's supposed to be four in my favor. Mm -hmm. If I am the petitioner, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be four against two in my favor. So if the it's burden not, of the petitioner is higher. Yes. We'll get to the burden of which is a very, very, very interesting okay, let's, discussion. Let's move on. So right. the issues, mm -hmm. whether or not rejected votes should be included, whether or not votes must be invalidated. Uh, these are the issues that have already been filed? No, these are the issues filed in 2013. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, Somebody was arguing about rejected votes. Re That's interesting. I've that always time. had a concern in Ghana about our rejected yeah, votes so when they get so high. Yeah, the, the like in 2008 mm -hmm. and in 2020. Yeah, yeah. 2008, it was even third. Yeah, it was third. It was no, third I, think, I think the same with 2020. 2020 rejected votes were so third. high. And I, I'm very suspicious about why we get that <laughs> level of rejected votes. Maybe you and I should conduct some research into that. Okay, okay so this is what the, the petitioner yes. was saying then. Yes. Rejected votes should be included. Whether or not votes must be invalidated on the ground that there were numerous irregularities, I think this what this what won. Um, in because this 2013, 2013, oh, this was, dismissed. was dismissed. Okay, yeah, it was dismissed. Uh, 17 is when they asked for what? a rerun. But it's virtually the same, actually. Then that's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. That's the base, the grounds on which they also challenged in 2017 were similar grounds. So okay. we may just discuss it and even gloss over. Okay, let's, let's move on quickly. Let's move on. So quickly. the judgment uh, is judgment without an e, but. Fine. Right. The unanimous judgments, court, and they were unanimous. Okay, they held that the constitutional duty of the IEBC was to ensure that the authority was to conduct elections, and that all the steps they take in conducting the elections are supposed to inure to the benefits of the voter. Right. Mm -hmm. that, and that's a general principle. But then came the issue of the standard of proof. Mm -hmm. So the burden and standard of proof normally goes together. Yes. Burden of proof is in two senses. The first sense is that the burden of proof is on the one who alleges. Yeah. Now, the standard of proof. When we say standard of proof, it means that to what extent is the burden of proof satisfied? Mm -hmm. The standard of proof here is higher than the civil standard, which is preponderance of probabilities, but at the same time, less than the criminal standard, That's which what is they used to tell us. the unreasonable. They used to tell us that in law school. Very confusing. Very, very so what then is the standard? Uh, so it's higher than the ordinary civil standard, yes. which, is, which is balance of probabilities. probabilities. Mm -hmm. And viewers, what does that mean? That's, that's, that, that just means that if there's a civil trial, the court will look at between... Paul Adomotri and Kwekwe Japon, who is more likely to be telling us the truth. That's a civil standard if it's not a criminal matter. And the criminal matter, you have to establish it beyond reasonable doubt. So even if you have established it and significant doubt is raised, or even small doubt is raised, you have lost the case. Because criminal means somebody's going to prison and somebody's life is going to be taken or somebody's freedoms are going to be taken and therefore we take it very seriously. So burden of proof, standard of proof for the Kenyan election is that higher than civil, but, but lower, lower than, than beyond reasonable doubt. And the rationale okay. is that even though it's a civil matter, it is very important. It's let's, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it it's, up. It's power. And then technological faults. So the, the, the court basically said that, yes, there may be irregularities. However, the main test is that the irregularities must substantially affect the final results. That's what they always say. That is what we are looking so for. So it's we not just for irregularities simpliciter. Yes. They are looking for those irregularities that were consequential yes. to the outcome. Yes. All but right. one interesting thing that was established in the Supreme Court consistently is what we call the Ryla Doctrine. Mm -hmm. So the Ryla Doctrine says that immediately any act in an election contravenes the Constitution. No matter whether or not it affects the end, the end result, it should be valid. It but should that's, be that's, void. That's interesting. That was, that was, that was the argument void. that was made in the 2013 petition. That's the argument that Philip Addison and Co. carried. Well, that if the process said voters must be verified, where any voter was not verified, anywhere in the country, that vote must be annulled. Yes. Because and it's a breach of the, the regulation. And that's what we know as the Ryla Doctrine. Did the court so, accept that? Yes. The, in 2017, they, they did. did. In 2013, they said, well, the main thing should be, the main consideration should be, let's just see whether or not 
the final votes are affected. Mm -hmm. But in 2017, the court drew inspiration from Section 83 of the Elections Act of Kenya. Is the time? Yeah. <laughs> Elections Act of, Act of Kenya, which provided that the rules or the conduct of the election must comply with the Constitution or that any other irregularity must substantially affect the final result. The court held that it is, dis it is conjunctive in the sense that you must show in it is disjunctive, meaning either you show that there was a violation of the Constitution or that the final result substantially affects the will of the people. Any of this is sufficient to, cost or to, to, to push the court to annul the elections. Okay, let me leave it there. So what are we, so Supreme Court has one of three outcomes. Either dismiss the um, application, yes. ask for voting in certain areas, yes. or ask no. for voting in the whole country, yes. re-voting of yes. everything. Yes, that's why I know. It has happened before. Mm. And when it happened, who won? He won again. He won again. When the, the vote was done again. Yes, he won again. Uh, if it's done again, do you think the same outcome will occur? Oh. That's a question for the politicians. <laughs> Let me not ask you that <laughs> question. Okay. <laughs>